Hey everybody, this is Coach Brian from the SAT Up team at Score Beyond. Welcome to our webinar on the new SAT. Uh, we'll talk about how it is different from the current SAT and what to expect heading into 2016. Now before we do, uh, I want to remind you you can revisit this webinar on our blog or our coaches newsletter which uh, we send out via email. You can also find it on our YouTube channel along with a bunch of other great videos on test preparation and specifically the SAT. Okay, let's dive in. The new SAT will first appear in March of 2016. So March 5th, that's the first SAT date that College Board will administer the new test. And we have a new SAT Up app coming out specifically for that test so you can practice. However, if you want to take the current SAT one last time, your last chance to do so will be January 23rd, 2016. If you're more comfortable with that test, that's the last chance that you'll have to take it. After that date, it will be no more and you'll only see the new SAT. Now on the new SAT, uh, there are only two subject sections. The current SAT has three, critical reading, math, writing, which includes the essay. But the new uh, SAT will only have two subject sections, evidence-based reading and writing, and math. So they're basically lumping the reading and writing together, uh, but the math, uh, it basically stays the same. The only difference there is that on one section you'll be able to use a calculator, and then on another section you will not. Uh, another structural change to the test is the time that you'll have to complete it. Uh, the sections are a little bit longer, but there are fewer of them. The old SAT was about four hours in total, including breaks. For the new SAT, we don't know where the, uh, the breaks will be administered, but we do know that the total testing time that you will have is three hours and 50 minutes. The essay is optional now, so if you opt not to take the essay, then you'll only have three hours to complete the rest of the test. Uh, if you do take the essay, it's 50 minutes, so then you get your three hours and 50 minutes. Let's talk about that essay a little bit more. Uh, yes, it is optional now, uh, which means you don't have to take it, and if you don't take it, that will not affect your total score. You can take the essay, and that also will not affect your total score. But if you don't take the essay, you'll still get a total score for the rest of the test, for the evidence-based reading, and for the math. So you might ask, okay, hey, if the essay is optional, should I even take it? I maybe don't like writing essays, or it seems like a really long essay, 50 minutes. The old essay used to be 25. Uh, and I'd say, yeah, if, if you don't want to take it, you don't have to. But uh, colleges might still require you to take the essay with the SAT, so check with their admissions requirements first. Uh, you can usually find those on the admissions websites for uh, those specific colleges. If they don't have information out just yet, you know, feel free to email or call them, but they should come out with uh, admissions requirements for the new SAT after it is administered in March. So keep checking. Now, since the essay is optional uh, and it doesn't affect your score, uh, we should talk about how the SAT will be scored. Uh, for the new SAT in March. The total score is going to be 1,600. The old SAT or the current SAT is 2,400 because it has three uh, sections uh, in which you can score 800 each, right? 800 for critical reading, 800 for math, 800 for writing. Now, since there's only evidence-based reading and writing and math, we only have two sections that we can get uh, a maximum of 800 in. So, uh, put those together, there's your total score, 1600. Now, since the essay is separate, it's also optional, it gets its own scoring. You'll have two graders for the essay, and they'll give you a grade of 1 to 4 for each grader. So your total score there will be 2 to 8. Uh, that's not factored into the 1600, uh, but colleges can still see that score. Another uh, interesting change for the scoring is that no longer, if you miss a question, will you uh, have a quarter of a point deducted from your point total at the end of the test. 
Uh, so yeah, College Board has done away with that penalty, and uh, that's great because you can guess without uh, worrying whether you get the question wrong and whether it will hurt you. Uh, however, they will only give you positive points for correct answers. So uh, if you guess, it doesn't uh, give you an advantage if you don't get the question right. Um, but it's good to know. No more guessing penalty. So let's talk about evidence-based reading. Uh, we'll talk about the writing in a, in a second. For the reading section of evidence-based reading and writing, uh, the reading section will be 52 questions that you have to do in 65 minutes. Now, they no longer have sentence completions. The reading section will only be passages, and uh, it will have about 10 to 11 questions per passage. You won't get any more short passages. They'll all be about 500 to 750 words. Uh, the College Board has said these passages will be more straightforward, so you get these less archaic, less convoluted passages. Uh, they want passages that are more reflective of what you would see in school uh, and more in line with the curriculum that you uh, will be taught in school. So uh, another change, however, for passages is that they might include uh, a chart or a graph, some extra information that you would have to connect with the text of the passage. So watch out for that. If you want more specific details, uh, I recommend going to our blog uh, where we have uh, some posts up already about the new SAT reading section, and we'll have some more in the near future. Now for the writing portion of the evidence-based reading and writing section, uh, the SAT or College Board is calling that the writing and language section. It's similar to the other writing section of the current SAT, but it is also very different. For this section, you'll have 44 questions that you need to do in 35 minutes. So you've got to be a little quicker in this section. Uh, it will consist of four passages, and each passage will have 11 questions per passage. So again, the SAT is getting rid of those sentence-by-sentence -sentence questions where you have a kind of an out-of-context sentence and you have to figure out what the error is in that sentence. Now they're giving uh, passages and using the context you have to figure out whether there's a grammatical error in a sentence or some other question that they might ask. In fact, uh, they say that they will be testing more uh, the expression of uh, ideas, so more about uh, a writer's style or their rhetoric or uh, their argumentative structure. Um, or how they uh, have developed their point over the course of the whole essay. So they're, they're going to have more holistic, contextual questions, but they'll also still ask about some grammatical errors. Uh, again, if you want more specific details on the writing and language section, I recommend going to the blog, which you can find at this link right there. So for the new math section of the SAT, uh, again, a little different. Uh, one section, you won't be able to use a calculator, and it'll have 20 questions that you have to do in 25 minutes. The other section will have 38 questions that you would have to do in 55 minutes, but you get to use a calculator for that section. Not too much has changed in terms of what they cover in the math. Uh, there's a lot of algebra in there. They'll still have geometry. Uh, however, they want to include more uh, charts and graphs. So again, they want you to use uh, a certain um, piece of information that you would more likely see in school and uh, perform uh, mathematical operations on it or just uh, write maybe algebraic expressions from that information. Uh, however, you're also going to have some questions that you would see on the current SAT math section, so uh, no surprises there. For the new SAT math section, they want to try to make it more holistic, more contextual. Uh, but if you want more specific details about that, again, I recommend you visit our blog at that link. Okay, so uh, for SAT Up, uh, we are creating a new app for the new SAT. And it's specifically designed uh, with new content reflective of the new SAT. And it will monitor your strengths and weaknesses uh, as defined by the new SAT. Uh, it will also have 
uh, a new structure to daily workouts so that you can personalize how you practice uh, for the new SAT. So uh, some great updates are going to be in this app, uh, and you can find it, uh, it for Android at Google Play. You can also find it for iOS at the App Store through uh, either of those two links. So I recommend that you download it, uh, take the diagnostic tests, practice, play around with the app, see, uh, see its different features and how it can help you prepare for either the current SAT or more especially the new SAT coming up in March 2016. So thank you for uh, joining me on this webinar and learning about the new SAT. If you have any more questions, feel free to reach out via email. And again, sign up for our blog, uh, our coach's newsletter, and check us out uh, on YouTube. Uh, that's it. Have a good day.